Friday, August 20th, 2010, and welcome to This Week in Linux News. Had a pretty decent week for Linux news this week, so let's go ahead and get started. Google's had to send out $10,000 in bounties with this latest update. There were a total of 10 bugs fixed, with the maximum payout being $1,337, which is a kind of a cool number. So if you find any bugs in Chrome, make sure to let Google know they might be sending a check to your door. In other Google news, Google Voice and Chat finally has come to Linux. If you're not sure what Gmail Voice and Video is, it's probably because they released it almost two years ago to Windows and Mac and somehow left Linux out of the mix. One way or another, it is very nice to finally be included, and I will be trying it out in Gmail very soon. I've actually just installed it on my machine. I don't know how many of you out there are gamers, but I have a feeling it's quite a few of you. There's a new game that's got an alpha build out. It's called Zero AD. Now this game's been in development for about 10 years, and they couldn't get a stable release done, so they finally released it open source back in July. So after almost a decade of working on it and not being able to come up with a stable release, it takes them, what, one month of working on it open source to actually come up with an alpha build? Awesome. If development moves along that swiftly from now on, I can foresee a beta in the near future as followed by a release candidate and then a final product within probably six months. By the way, if you're not familiar with what Zero AD is, it's a real-time strategy game, one of those where you control your little army and you build buildings and all of those fun things like that. Alright, and now it's Ubuntu news time for just a little bit. Ubuntu 10.04.1 has released. This is the first milestone since the major release that happened back in April. Basically just a lot of updates, a lot of bug fixes, and major things like that. 10.04 will, of course, continue to be supported until April of 2013 on desktops and 2015 on servers. Speaking of Ubuntu, Mark Shuttleworth has had a really busy week this week. On Monday, he announced that they were going to be adding multi-touch support to Ubuntu 10.10, .10, as well as a new gesture language, where you can use up to four fingers on a multi-touch device to string together commands in a sort of sentence language to give the computer commands. They're primarily targeting this at the Dell Latitude XT2, which is an insanely ungodly expensive tablet PC laptop hybrid thing. By expensive, I mean it's about $2,000 but it's expected to work with a multitude of devices, including the Apple Magic Trackpad they just released. In addition, Shuttleworth announced they've decided on a name for Ubuntu 11.04. It's going to be called Natty Narwhal, the narwhal being the awesomest animal on the entire planet ever. If you'd like to know why they chose Natty Narwhal as the name, I will have that in the show notes, which will be in the doobly-doo. And the newest post on Shuttleworth's blog is actually really important to people like you and me, people here on YouTube. Basically, he's trying to create a wiki page on the Ubuntu site for Maverick movies, different ads that are being created on YouTube for Ubuntu-specific items. And if you feel up to it, create a 30-second video. It might just end up being seen by Mark Shuttleworth. And speaking of Ubuntu 10.10, .10, a new version of the Unity interface has been released at this point. They've added a new home screen when you click the Ubuntu button in the upper left-hand corner, which is supposed to be sort of reminiscent of the old Netbook Edition. It's still not quite finished yet, but hopefully by the time 10.10 .10 comes, they will have it done. And speaking of new things and new versions, Pethos version 0.3 released this week. If you're not familiar, Pethos is actually a Linux native client to connect to Pandora from your desktop. And unlike the Pandora desktop client you might see on other operating systems, this one's not Flash-based. In addition, it comes with LastFM scrobbling support. I installed it on my desktop and gave it a quick try. It runs very quickly, very smoothly, and very easy to get set up and get using. In addition, a new version of the Midori web browser released this week. Midori is a very lightweight browser that uses WebKit if you're not familiar, and the biggest new feature is delayed pages. You know how many times Firefox crashes on you and it's because of one certain page, and every time you try to open it back up that page tries to load again. Well the delayed pages makes you refresh the page before it actually shows anything again. So it might be kind of inconvenient, but if you've got that one tab that you need to get rid of, you don't have to rush to try to close it really quickly. And let's end things with a little bit of Debian news. According to the unofficial Debian bug tracker, 219 bugs remain to be fixed before they can actually release Debian Squeeze. They're aiming for a Christmas release date, so looking forward to that. And speaking of Debian, two Linux distributions celebrated their birthdays this week. Debian is 17 years old, which means it can get its driver's license and next year it can vote. Okay, not really. In addition, OpenSUSE actually had its birthday last week, not this week. It turned five years old. Our little guy is going to be going to kindergarten. Well, that's it for this week in Linux news. There will probably not be any videos this coming week because starting Sunday, I am on vacation going to the Bahamas, and I will be back the following Saturday. So if I don't see you before then, if I don't make any videos before then, have a great week. Make sure to check out the website, thisweekinlinux.com, if you haven't already. Again, my name is Jordan. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.